Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Getting Inside the Right Male Mind. I'm Lisa Shield. And I'm Benjamin Shield. And we are so happy to see you. Hi, baby. Hi, sweetie. (laughs) There's nowhere I'd rather be than right here with you and having another wonderful conversation. So today we are going to talk about how to be playful without leading someone on. And this topic comes from one of our wonderful clients who is in our 12-week. No, she already did the 12-week Emotionally Naked Dating course. And now she's in our six-month program, which is called the Sisterhood of Self-Actualized Women. It is SSW. And this is from Minerva. She wrote to us and she said, Lisa, how about the subject of female embodiment on a date while maintaining boundaries. Seems like a lot of us are hung up on that. So I thought this was a great topic. Perfect. Yeah, because so many women are going into dates and they're so afraid, babe, that they're going to lead a man on and especially lead him on sexually and they don't even know if they like him and they're so nothing is happening on these dates right right? so this is such a great topic before we started you were talking about how the goal of a date is to connect to people and play with the male and female energies and if that's not happening then a guy will stick around you know he may even sit there for an hour or two or three Mm -hmm. And he'll be waiting for some kind of spark that never happens. And then there's no second date. Or he'll be nervous and he'll just be talking about himself Mm -hmm. or asking interview questions. And as soon as there's that moment where it's just reaching over, just touching a hand for a moment or or just touching a shoulder or (laughs) or leaning in and smiling, Mm -hmm. it changes everything. It changes the whole dynamics of the date. Yeah, something I hear from many women is, oh, I'm in sales or I'm a realtor and I can talk to anyone, Mm -hmm. right? But that's very different than creating some kind of romantic rapport on a date. Right, we've heard of many, many times, many times where a woman would say, God, I had this great first date, it was three hours. It was amazing. And um, uh, I never heard from him again. I, I, I'm baffled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And what what normally happens is a lot of these women, they think, gosh, I did, you know, I was there, the conversation was flowing, we were talking, it se- he seemed really into me. But why didn't I hear from him again? Yeah. And it's not just in in-person dates. It could even be on Zoom dates yeah. where, you know, people can be playful. And it just, you know, it tells the guy that this is going to be fun. This relationship isn't going, just going to be conversation and interesting, you know, topics and, you know, autobiographical disclosures. This could be really fun. So whether it's in person, on a Zoom date, on, even on a telephone call, even occasionally, you know, on texting. Honey, let me ask you. I think a lot of times women are waiting for the guy to create that spark or whatever, or they're just waiting for chemistry, right? Mm-hmm. And my feeling is that if nothing happens, nothing happens. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing that with me too and with a lot of things that are you know, have gone on in the media many men are also trepidatious about opening that door or doing something that's going to push a woman away or get you know get a reaction from her on a date and so in some ways i think men are also waiting for women to open up that door and give them the okay right Right. Or they're afraid of two things. One is being considered a predator, mm-hmm. and the other is being turned down and mm-hmm. feeling shame. And shame could be the most potent emotion that mm-hmm. a man can feel, you know, the most negative emotion a man could feel. So if a woman comes forward and, and as you say, opens that 
door. And a good man will learn to match what the woman is offering mm -hmm. and not, you know, go further so that, and, and he could sense if she's becoming uncomfortable, mm -hmm. uh, but to be able to match what the woman is, is offering. And, and many times a man is waiting to see if a woman is open or not. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. A first date is really the first step you know, mm -hmm. or, or one of the first steps of, of learning, is this person going to be my life partner? Mm -hmm. Am I, are, are we going to be playmates, you know, lovers, best friends, playmates throughout life? And if it just seems like it's a, an interesting business conversation as a realtor or as a, you know, just a, um, you know, medical sales or whatever it is, you know, people that, you know, have the gift of conversation, but it doesn't create that spark. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, have that spark where things can playfulness and, and, and spontaneity and laughing and all those things can, can develop. Right. There's got to be some kind of romantic connection. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. A guy will walk away. And even if he spent hours with that woman, she'll probably never hear from him again. Yeah. And one way to have a romantic connection without being sexual is what we call bell jarring. Mm -hmm. You know, where it's imagining that there's a bell jar over the two of you. Mm -hmm. And nothing else exists, you know, and, and often a man will have never experienced that from anyone, not from their male friends, not from their family, not from past relationships. And it is extraordinary, mm -hmm. you know, and it becomes not so much of what's said on that date, but mm -hmm. how how we feel afterwards, during and after. Right. And if we feel so received and, and so focused on, mm -hmm. you know, and connected. So imagining that bell jar over the two people, even if it's in a busy, noisy restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, nothing else exists except the two of you. Yeah, and it's really sexy to, yeah. to be that present with another person. It creates just a out of space and time kind of feeling. That feeling that so many lovers or couples will say we lost track of time and they were closing down the right. restaurant and we looked around and we didn't realize we'd been sitting there for hours. Yeah. And you can create that yeah, with that. that with that bell jar effect. I think babe, women are so afraid of leading a man on that mm. nothing happens, mm. nothing romantic happens. Yeah. And because as women, we are so, we, we are, we think that communication is the way to connect. And if a conversation seems to be flowing, that that is making a connection mm -hmm. because the conversation was, was flowing and there was no end to it. But for a man, He's looking specifically for that romantic moment, that yeah. romantic spark. So back to Minerva's question, you know, about the subject of female embodiment. The first thing about female embodiment is confidence. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've said many times that, that a woman who is in her body is so sexy. And mm -hmm. that if I were at a stop at a red light and a beautiful woman who's all decked out and in you know, high heels and, and uh, all that. And she's having trouble with walking with the high heels and, and, and <laughs> maneuvering in, in, a, in a tight dress. Well, it would get my attention for a few moments, but not, not, you know, I wouldn't watch her go from one corner to the other corner in the crosswalk. But if, Another woman of any age or size um, were just in her body, no matter how she was dressed, and she was just walking. You know, my eyes would follow her from one corner to the other, and I'd have a smile on my face you know, <laughs> because it's it's just it's not even it's not that it's sexual. It's just like wow, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. This is a woman. This is a woman who knows she's a woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's beautiful. So exuding confidence as a woman can and, and creating that beautiful romantic connection, it may be touching the man's arm, you know, when you're making a point, mm-hmm. looking, de- leaning in and looking yeah. into his eyes, you know, but it could also, if that's uncomfortable for, for some women, it could be touching your own body, running your fingers through your own mm-hmm. hair. You know, we have a, right. a dear friend who is a, a Tantra teacher, an amazing Tantra mm-hmm. teacher. And one of the most beautiful things, she has this long hair and she just sits and twirls her hair and you know, and it's mesmerizing. Yeah. It's so mesmerizing to see her do that. But a woman who draws attention to her body, not just because she's wearing sexy clothes, but touches her body, a man is going to be mesmerized right. Right. by that right. Right? on a date. And it doesn't matter what you're talking about, right. but if you're touching your body, you know, he's going to be wishing he was touching right. your body too. Right. But there's a confidence in a woman who will open that door just ever so slightly mm-hmm. on a date with a man. And a man will notice that. He will notice it. So mature men understand that just because a woman is opening up that door or if she's willing to have just even a little sexy talk, Mm -hmm. you know, a little sexy banter back and forth, that just because she's doing that, a grown man knows that that doesn't automatically mean she's going to jump into bed with him, right? Right. He knows that that's not going to happen. And he may, some men, just because they're being men, may want to push that envelope a little bit and see how far it will go. But they want to know that they can that they can have that kind of interplay with a woman and that she's not going to freak out Mm -hmm. and suddenly give him a lecture about oh no i you know i want to take things slowly i'm looking for a long-term relationship i want somebody who really wants to take the time to get to know me what would happen if you were on a first or a second date and a woman did that well that would be horrible first I would be afraid to be myself and to be playful. I would feel shame. I would feel shut down. Mm-hmm. And I would feel like, God, this is how my my mother would talk to me or or <laughs> you know, uh, or you know, like a teacher, my third grade teacher. So, you know, it's it's unattractive behavior. Yeah. And I think we have to look at what's attractive behavior without yeah. stepping over the line. But what's attractive because Really, the idea of a, a date is to see if there is attraction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and and to make that, to take those little steps and start to progress that romantic connection, right? Like, that's what you're there for. And especially, like, if you're on a coffee date or you're having a lovely dinner and you're not at each other's homes or in the car together you're in a public place and so you're just exploring that romantic connection and really on those initial dates that's what you're there to do it's not to talk about how great your realist you're doing in your real estate right. business right. or even you know I, he, he doesn't care about your girlfriends and how many friends you have and you know what your girls are up to i mean He's there to really, he wants to get to know you, but he also wants to see, are you a mature, sexually confident woman? Yes. Right? Yes. And that's a huge turn on. Right, because he wants to to extrapolate that, what that would be five years from now, 20 years from now. Yep. You know, yeah. And I think the, the one thing I want to put out there that I think every woman needs to know is that you always have the power to say no. Mm -hmm. You know, if things go too far or if they get uncomfortable or you're starting to feel that this man isn't, that the man sitting across from you is going too far, you 
always have the power to say no. But you want to think of this as playfulness Mm -hmm. and not flirting. Not flirting. Because flirting is can be manipulative, it can be strategic, mm-hmm. where playfulness is expansive. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, it's it's like uh, uh, impromptu. It, yeah. It's like uh, play. And again, it's not what people say on a date, it's how they feel on the date and they, how, how they feel afterwards. And if there's playfulness, that's great. If there's flirtation, it could almost feel like, well, this woman is coming on to me stopping short Mm -hmm. you know and so with playfulness there's just like wow this is great and with flirtation sometimes it's nice but it's frustrating oh yep and and i think it's like the difference between overt sexuality and sensuality yes right yeah yeah when you're being flirtatious um, it, it it has a very definite sexual tone to it, but you can be playful without being sexual at all. Yeah. And the truth is that a lot of men will get turned off by overt sexuality mm-hmm. because, you know, they may not really be there, you know, to match that level. Either. Yeah. Unless, you know, someone's a player and, and maybe not the right guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a good guy, you know, really wants to develop a friendship, which comes from playfulness, mm-hmm. you know, trust and safety, which comes from playfulness. And flirtatious is something outside of that. Yeah. And overt sexuality is something outside of that. Mm-hmm. And I think also that playfulness really comes from the heart. You know, it, it comes from heart and from compassion. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I always had a difficult time being flirtatious because it felt gamey to me. And when I watched other women doing it, I would watch them and it just seemed so put on and mm-hmm. inauthentic a lot of times. It was like I would watch them and I'd, I'd think, God, you're not like, that's not how you are, mm-hmm. except when you get in front of a guy and then suddenly you become this other person right. and you start behaving in right. ways that that I would never want to be caught mm-hmm. doing, right? Yeah. And so for me, for the longest time, I just didn't know how to interact with right. men because I couldn't do what I saw other women doing mm-hmm. and it didn't feel authentic to me. And once... I really, and this is something that we do in our 12 week emotionally naked Mm -hmm. dating program that we teach. I started to develop deep compassion and understanding for men. And instead of seeing them as other and like these foreign creatures that I could only relate to in this gamey kind of way because I really didn't know them. I started to learn about how men think and how af- they're just as afraid of us and they're just as afraid oh, yeah. of rejection as we are, oh, yeah. right? And I started to see that I could do this with heart and I could be playful mm. because I know how sensitive mm-hmm. men are and I know how sweet they are. And so now I can play with a man because I'm playing with his sensitivity and his sweetness, and I know what I'm doing and how it's making him feel, but there's love, there's compassion, there's caring and behind that connection. And it's so much about the come from, right? Yeah. It's so much these, these, these behaviors when they come from the right place and they have the right intention behind them, it feels good. It feels genuine. I can even do that on a date with a man that I know I may never see again, Mm -hmm. but I do it because I love to stroke a man's ego and nothing in the world makes me feel better than to see that beautiful bright light go off behind a man's eyes when I say something sweet 
like you're my hero or I've never met a man like you. You have so much kindness. You're such a wonderful man. I have so much respect for you. And then I see that mm. light come on mm. and I, it feels good to me to do that. Yeah, it's a gift. We, a woman gives a man a gift, you know, and whether it leads to a second date or, you know, a long-term relationship, a lifetime relationship, that moment is a gift. And getting back to something that you said is that playfulness, even the, the self-sensuality, you know, stroke, you know, like mm-hmm. waving your hands through your hair, it mirrors a man's masculinity back to them. Like a man is sitting there saying, I'm with this amazing woman. I am with this, this sensuous woman. I want everyone in the restaurant to see us. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, that's so yeah. sweet, yeah. honey. Oh, and if, um, if, you know, it, if it goes too far, if it does start to get out of hand, mm-hmm. well, what does a woman do? What would you, you know, let's say, because this is one of the paradoxes of all of this. As, as a woman, I don't want to make the sexual overtures. Mm-hmm. I don't want to lead on that front. I want to give you signs that it's okay for you to lead, and I want to let you know that that's okay. But let's say that you you know you may take it a little too far for me. You mm-hmm. may misunderstand my you know where I'm coming from, and you may invite me back to your place when I'm not ready to go. Uh-huh. What what would you want a woman to do in that circumstance? Well, if she's interested in the guy, and the guy may you know be on a different track than than she is, she could say you know. I, I really like you and, you know, I really want to know more about you and you to, to learn about me. And in the past, I've jumped into things too quickly. You know, when I've been attracted to someone, I'm certainly attracted to you. It's taken the relationship upside down. You know, I, so many times I've been lovers before we could even establish friendship if we ever would. And now we're pretending we're lovers. And we have to scramble back to become friends to develop that foundation of friendship, trust, and safety, and shared experiences. And so just saying, you know, I I really am looking to get to know you and to build and to let this progress naturally. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. And a man would feel okay with that. A good man would. A good man. And if he doesn't, then he's not your guy. Not your guy. Yeah. He's more interested in the sex than he is in the person. Yeah. And there's something that a lot of women are saying today that a lot of men will say, well, the way I bond with a woman is through sex, and I need to know if we're sexually compatible before I can know if I really like you. What would you say to a woman if a man were to say that? Well, a lot of men don't know how to express emotions other than sex. Mm-hmm. And that's not your guy. Right. Because you want someone who's emotionally available, who can't just default to sex, right. who can spend hours and dates you know, getting to know each other, playing, so that that sexual intimacy is is just such a natural extension of that. You know, it's just like seamless, where it's not just like, let's jump in and have sex, or let's wait, you know, to some date in the future to have sex, but where it's a natural flow. Right. So, you know, some of the things that we teach our clients, let's say you're you know, in a bar or you're at a booth in the corner having a wonderful date and you've had a couple of drinks and you're flirting with this guy and maybe he's taking it a little further than you're comfortable Mm -hmm. with. And Mm -hmm. it may be a first or a second or even a third date. Some wonderful lines, some things that you can say. The first thing you want to do, and it is so important that you maintain that playful Mm -hmm. energy, right? That you don't suddenly snap in and turn into another person because if his hands start wandering, you know, Mm -hmm. below your neck or somewhere you don't want them to be, you you know, if you suddenly push Mm -hmm. him away and he feels shamed or rejected, 
that's not a good thing. That is going to leave an imprint in a guy's oh, yeah. mind, especially if he's a really good guy. And you may think that that's absolutely appropriate. And I understand if you feel you're in danger, if something goes too far, and you have to give an absolute no, then you need to give an absolute no. But if, the, if you're having fun mm. and suddenly this just turns upside down yeah. and you're pushing this mm. guy away, it's going to be a shock to his system. Right. It will also warn him that he can't be sexually spontaneous, you mm -hmm. know, sometime in the future, you know, like when you're in a relationship, a sexual relationship that he'll have to hold back because he's terrified of that rejection. Yeah. Like, oh my God, I, I did something wrong. You know, the whole mood is, is shot. The day is shot. You know, the week is shot. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, knowing that, oh, you know, I can, I can explore boundaries and really have the boundaries reflected back to me. So, Gen I, so I learn, yeah. Yeah, so you want to do this at least initially, gently and playfully. So what you might say is, hey, cowboy, or right. whoa, tiger, right. let's slow this down a little bit, right? So th some, something playful and fun like that, a great guy like Benjamin is gonna, gonna, going to say, oh, okay, let's dial it back a little bit, mm -hmm. right? And, yeah. not, and not be upset. He'll say, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, and he'll dial it back and know that that's as far as it's going to go. Or you might say, you have no idea how hard it is to say no to you, but let's enjoy getting to know each other and not get ahead of ourselves mm -hmm. just yet. So the just yet lets him know that right. there's a future. That's a great line. That, right? That's great. So the, uh, just yet. So it lets him know we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on board, uh -huh. but let's, let's take, you know, let's slow this down a little bit. Another way to say this, and I don't know, some of you may not know this, but a lot of men have what they call, they play the long game and the short uh -huh. game. Right. Okay. Want to tell them what the long game and the short game are, babe? Well, the short game <laughs> is getting the woman into bed. As quickly as possible. As quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And they may really like the woman. They may not have bad intention, but they're really not looking for... They're not thinking about relationship. They're thinking about immediacy mm -hmm. and sexual attraction, excitement, you know, all of that. And the long game is when you really build on shared experience, trust and safety, you know, mutual respect, uh, all of those things that, that, that will lead to a beautiful sexual relationship down the down the road, right? Uh, but jumping into bed so quickly, there's none of that. There's no foundation. So in the morning, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, do I know this person? Do I want to know this person? Do I even like this person? You know, and do I need to pretend that we're lovers now mm -hmm. that we've made love? Um, uh, do we say? we made a mistake and, and let's try to date, but it's, it's already too you know, late. Too late. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the, yeah. but what I think the most important thing is about, you know, one of the important things about the long game and the short game is that when, you know, when a guy meets you, he, he knows if he's, you know, if you're the, if you're the woman, he wants to play the long game or the short game with. Mm -hmm. And so on a date, a lot of times a man is assessing, is this a long game or is this a short game? Mm -hmm. And he can tell. And a lot of men will look, you know, meet a woman and immediately be turned off by certain behaviors, certain things that he knows no, but here I am. I might as well see if I can play the short game mm -hmm. and see if I can get her into bed because I know this is not my woman. But the, there, you can also, on that date, by the way you are with him, by the way you interact, mm -hmm. if, you, if you capture this man's attention and he is intrigued by the kind and caliber of woman you are and who you're being, 
he will play the long game with a woman that he's serious about, right? And so one thing you can say to a guy is, look, if you're, you can say if he takes it too far, if you're looking to play the short game, that's not me. I'm a long game kind of mm -hmm. gal, right? right? And he, that is really clever, number one, because it lets him know that you're, too, you're keyed into this long game, short game kind of thing, and that you understand male psychology more than a lot of other women. So using that terminology can really make a man kind of sit up and go, huh, okay, she's not just, uh, you know, some woman I can just coerce into bed, this one, and you're going to get his attention. So let me repeat these lines just so everybody has them, okay? Whoa, cowboy or whoa, tiger, <laughs> let's slow this down a bit. You have no idea how hard it is to mm. say no to you, mm. but let's enjoy getting to know each other and not get ahead of ourselves. That's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third one is, if you're looking to play the short game, that's not me. I'm a long game kind of gal. Mm. So you can come up with your own, but it is, it is really good, Minerva, and mm. all you women out there, mm. To have a couple of these great lines, you know, in your back pocket so that you can use them when those situations arise. And one other thing to notice is my tone of voice. Mm -hmm. If I were to say this in a punishing way or with a harsh tone, they're not going to work. Mm -hmm. If I were to say, hey, cowboy, let's slow this down a bit, mm -hmm. that's not going to work. That's punishing, that's shaming. It's that playful, fun tone in my voice that keeps it kind and compassionate and fun and puts up a lovely boundary without pushing a man away. All right, we did it. <laughs> Way to go. All right, everybody. This has been another Getting Inside the Right Male Mind. Thank you, Minerva, for that wonderful yeah. question. Please send us your questions. You can do that by emailing me. It's podcast at lisashield.com. If you want to work with Benjamin and me and just get off the dating sites forever and find the guardian of your soul, we can help you do that in 12 weeks. We have a program called Emotionally Naked Dating, and we do all kinds of things, everything from helping you get the perfect online dating photographs. I was a professional fashion photographer for 15 years, and I will help guide you through that process. If you don't think your photos matter, think again. And you don't want glamour shots, you don't wanna look fake or overtly sexual, you want to look sensual and beautiful and natural. So we help you with things like that. And then this guy right here will write your <laughs> online dating profiles for you. He is the profile whisperer. In fact, one of our clients wrote to us and said if there were a Pulitzer Prize for profiles, <laughs> this Benjamin would get them. <laughs> get it. So, you know, we do everything from the simplest uh, and, you know, how, what dating sites to use and how to get a guy from a dating site to a Zoom date to an actual date to the deeper subjects like how do I know when I've met the guardian of my soul? How will I know that? What are my final five? How do I figure out my final five non-negotiables for dating? So this is an amazing, amazing 12-week program called Emotionally Naked Dating. You can find more out about that by going to lisashield.com. You can learn a lot about me on my website, and you can watch my free 45-minute presentation. If you like what you hear, stay to the end, because that's where you can book a call with me or a member of my team so we can show you how we can help you find a guy like this. Please rate and like 
my podcast. That is so, so important. Tell your friends, tell your boyfriends, tell your husbands, tell your girlfriends. Let's spread the word. We're trying to change the conversation about love and dating and online dating and men mm. and partnership. We want to break the mold. And from the feedback we've been getting, we're doing a pretty good job of it. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, 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 please like my YouTube channel. We want to get those numbers up as high as we can so that we can get up in the ratings and get the message out. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for spending your time with us. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!